Hey everybody, welcome back to Conscientious Omnivore. My name is Pal. Today we're going to be talking about vegan George Mambio shooting a deer, killing it, uh, ripping flesh off of its body and eating it in the form of a burger. And um, then he goes on to um, write an article to justify these actions and say that it's ethical and um, not just that it's sustainable, but that it's actually beneficial to the environment. And um, yeah, he says it's the right thing to do. And we're going to talk about whether or not this holds any um, kind of merit and whether or not I should stop being vegan and maybe set up a GoFundMe page where everybody can support me in buying some, you know, four or five hundred acres of land so that I can raise and ethically kill and shoot a deer of my own to feed my family of four. We will see uh, if these um, claims um, have any merit, like I say. Get into some facts and figures that you might find interesting, and then we'll see uh, where I stand on this issue. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first thing, um, in case anybody has missed it, here's just a, an article covering this um, you know, this action by uh, Mambio, vegan environmentalist um, who shot dead a wild deer before happily tucking into a venison burger is branded a hypocrite by horrified um, uh, apocalypse cow planet, um, how meat killed the planet viewers. So basically, you know, he's from London and he went off into uh, Scotland, the Highlands, and shot a deer. Um, and they're basically making the point, uh, making the case that uh, there are too many deer with no natural predators, their numbers have exploded, and he's gone and um, shot one of them. And then, uh, you know, he's basically saying this needs to be done, because here it is. He revealed how 750,000 deer roam freely in the Scottish Highlands, and with numbers exploding because there are no natural predators to keep them in check. So, you know... Um, in this one uh, estate where he was uh, shooting the deer, they've had a huge uh, sweeping call of the red deer um, across 90 square miles. And what you see is that, uh, you know, they have been able to get the deer to stop eating the seedling trees and the um, little um, new forests are now flourishing. And uh, they're trying to restore kind of um, forested land where currently there's just, uh, you know, grass and uh, the deer are basically eating all the little um, saplings and stuff. So, uh, yeah, basically, you know, he's saying that, um, you know, this is, uh, he didn't want to do it and what have you, but it's important. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's beneficial for the environment. He even wrote a op-ed piece that was printed in The Guardian, uh, which, you know, kind of addresses the backlash he was getting from a lot of vegans and other uh, animal rights activists and environmentalists saying that, uh, you know, this is not cool. And um, here he says right here that uh, he still believes it was the ethical thing to do. So he makes a whole bunch of claims here. I'm not going to go through every point of the article, but uh, we are going to talk a little bit about this. And, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that he says is that, uh, you know, his heart told him otherwise, but his head told him it's the right thing to do. <laughs> he says, if it helps, though it didn't help the deer, I hated every minute of it, from picking up the rifle and learning to use it, to finding and stalking the innocent animal, and then shooting it through the chest from 180 meters, watching it rear into the air, stumble, spasm, and die. It was a gruesome, horrible experience uh, for the deer, yes. For him, I'm not really that sure that uh, he was all that bothered by it if he was able to then go and eat the, um, the burger made from its body. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm not... Um, going to talk about his uh, actions so much as just this idea that, uh, you know, it's more ethical or that it's important to protect the environment. He makes a bunch of like weird claims about kind of speciesism that I don't think um, really kind of make any sense. Uh, I think he's just really st stretching and trying really hard to justify um, his actions. And uh, I'm going to show you guys some stuff at the end where um, it really kind of clearly shows that uh, he should know better because he knew better many years ago. We're going to look at an article that he wrote in 2012. But anyway, before we get into that, let's talk about, um, you know, uh, how much meat you can get from a deer. I just want to get into some, some basics just to see kind of like the practicality 
of this idea that um, that it's sustainable in any kind of way or that it's beneficial for a um, you know kind of like ethical uh, option as far as uh, the environmental impact of say consuming your calories from deer versus other kind of uh, plant foods because that is one thing that he talked about in this um, you know article is that uh, you know even a vegan diet um, does take up land and it does kill animals and there are those poor you know mice that get killed by the harvesters and you know all this kind of stuff and things that we intentionally kill um, because we don't want them to eat our food and and what have you so uh, you know pests insects uh, mice like I say or other kind of rodents like rabbits and stuff like that we do kill those to protect our food and um, he does admit that plant-based diets require much less land uh, than a meat-based diet but it still results in the inevitable death or exclusion of other animals and so this is why I want to talk about um, you know how much land you would you actually need so there is um, you know my my point is how much meat do we actually get from a deer so that we can figure out how many calories um, we're getting from a deer and then find out how many uh, you know deer we would need say for like a year's worth of calories and then find out how much land we would need to support that um, number of deer so uh, apologies for the pictures here they are um, uh, somewhat graphic here there's some dead deer uh, this is a hunting uh, website they talk about how to figure out roughly how much meat you're going to get from a deer they go through a whole range of um, explaining and uh, talking about how there's a lot less meat on a uh, deer that's edible versus you know um, farmed animals like um, lamb hog <laughs> so pigs uh, and then you know cattle so basically you can see that uh, the percentage of meat um, is is falling here there's only 40 percent um, edible meat on a buck versus 80 percent edible on a lamb or 79 percent edible from a pig 73 from um, black angus uh, beef and then uh, holstein steers 57 so it goes through they go through a whole bunch of calculations talking about kind of the ideal weight the um, more realistic you know how much you're going to lose for the bones and uh, other parts that you don't eat um, there is some that you lose from the uh, damaged uh, meat from the bullet wound or from the arrow uh, whatever you use to shoot the poor animal with and then he happily goes through and talks about two um, deer that he shot and then uh, compares it to the realistic versus the ideal and um, basically he ends up with these two deer that uh, he got 124 pounds of venison from so not ideal but better than the realistic number that he was using in the calculations and you know what i just want to end here is that uh, let's just you know call that an average of say 60 pounds of meat per deer um, that is actually pretty optimistic uh, because as they point out in the beginning of the article um, some of the animals are actually much smaller i think he got pretty lucky uh, I don't remember where it was in the beginning here, but um, they talk about, you know, some of the other deer like in the south are actually smaller than these northern um, deer found in like Wisconsin and other places. So let's just, for the sake of argument, go with like say an average of 60 pounds of meat per animal. That means that uh, we would get about 43,000 uh, kilocalories from one uh, deer. So 43,000 calories and um, that is again based on this average and uh, what we would look at is um, how much land you need for one deer this is a uh, article that's very interesting it's from another um, basically hunting resource uh, uh, website they are giving you information about how to uh, make your land ideal for uh, deer management and giving them the proper cover and uh, food resources and shelter and all this kind of stuff to optimize the, the number of deer you can have on a property they go through a lot of extensive calculations and, and explanations about uh, the mix of woods versus um, the kind of like more grazing areas and then interestingly enough they also talk about uh, food stocks that you want so like you want to actually plant um, food uh, you know edible um, crops for the deer specifically uh, because you want to be able to maximize it so this is already better than what nature would provide um, this is with like some management already involved from human um, so there is this human intervention in intervention aspect and if we're already talking about the ethics of um, you know like farmed uh, um, you know farming plants for human consumption versus farming 
plants for the deer that you're then going to kill. Like this isn't all that much better than a, you know, um, a factory farm situation where they're doing the same thing and basically farming plants to feed to the animals. Now, is the animal having a better life because they can live in their natural environment? What have you? Yes, absolutely. We're going to talk about that in a separate issue. But the long and skinny of this uh, article is that you need, uh, what was it, 6.7 acres um, of land uh, uh, in an ideal situation per deer, um, which is, here it was. So for their example, they had 235 acres, which was split up of 177 acres of woods, 52 acres of woods openings, and 6 acres of productive food plots. And they went through all the thing, like I say, that they go through this article, and you end up that uh, that land, 235 acres, is enough for 35 deer, and uh, which means roughly one um, deer per 6.7 acres. So in order to get the 43,000 um, calories that I mentioned before, you'd need at least 6.7 acres in this ideal kind of scenario where you can split up everything and have the food plots for them and all this kind of stuff. And uh, if you do the math on that, what you are seeing is that a person requiring about 2,000 calories per day would require 730,000 um, calories per year. And that means you would require 114 acres of land for just one person if you're going to feed them nothing but deer. Uh, I realize that it's kind of absurd to assume that somebody's only going to eat deer. We're going to address that in a, in a second, but I'm just doing this to make a point in talking about calories. And um, so this this is really, really bad. Like I say, 114 acres of land for just one person. That means for a family of four like me, we would need 456 acres of land uh, to have enough deer to supply our yearly calories. Um, this is like... Um, I think it's actually more than, it's like orders of magnitude worse. It's many, many times worse than even one of the most inefficient uh, feed sources, which is, say, like grass-fed beef. Um, this is way worse than that. Um, just for a comparison, um, basically, if you guys remember, I had the debate with Logan and Milk Jar back in the day. One of the things that I talked about and raised in this uh, debate was the inefficiency of um, grass-fed beef. And uh, what I put in the um, description here is a calculation, again, using kind of non-vegan sources, actual farm sources, talking about how much land you need for um, cattle, how much grazing, et cetera, et cetera, how many calories you're getting, how much meat you can get from the carcass, same thing, went through the whole thing. And what we found was that for a family of four, you need about 16 acres of land. So compare the 16 acres of land for grass-fed beef to get your calories for the, for the family of four versus the 456 acres required um, to give us enough calories from the deer. And compare all of this, even the 16 acres of land, compare this to the example that I linked here, and you can watch the video um, here on YouTube, um, where I covered a family of four who produces 90% of all the food they eat on one-tenth of an acre. Now, these people are actually not vegan. Um, they're vegetarian. They do have um, chickens and ducks, and they also have some goats, which they don't eat, but they do milk. So they, um, they use that, and they produce 90% of their own food. They actually produce way more food than they eat, and they take the surplus and they sell it. So they actually make their income. They make about $20,000 a year, and then they use that to buy any of the other kind of food that they need for the year, um, all from one-tenth of an acre. So there's four people living off of one-tenth of an acre, because they're primarily eating plants and um, they are able to like sustain themselves fairly well and actually you know make a living off of it um, from one tenth of an acre. Meanwhile you would need 16 acres to get enough calories from beef and you would need 456 to get enough calories from uh, from the deer. So that's why I kind of joked around at the beginning that uh, if I you know stop being vegan I'm going to set up a GoFundMe page so you guys can help me buy 456 acres of land so that we can have enough deer meat. Uh, to feed my family of four. It's incredibly uh, expensive. It's incredibly like a luxury. And uh, to think that the world could somehow, um, you know, feed itself or all the people or even just most of the people or even <laughs> some small part of the people uh, with these kind of methods is absolutely absurd. And I just think like, you know, Mambio should know better. And uh, I don't think this can be in any way kind of used um, as a justification for uh, exploiting these deer and, and hunting them and killing them. Now, he didn't really make the case 
for um, doing it just for food. Uh, it was more that, uh, you know, he wants to be able to help the forest, uh, you know, re recuperate and regenerate and start growing, and the deer are actually eating the, uh, the saplings. So it's not exactly the same thing. Um, I do also want to say, again, um, I've said this many times in my nutrition videos, I don't believe in mono mealing, so I wouldn't uh, mono meal deer either, um, and I wouldn't mono meal, you know, uh, anything else. But the family of four here that I gave in the example, they're not mono mealing either. They're eating a huge variety of, uh, of plants. You can see that they, um, the Dervais family grows over 400 species of plants. They have 4,300 pounds of vegetable food. They have 900 chickens and, um, sorry, I, I would sorry, chicken eggs. So they have 900 chicken eggs and 1,000 duck eggs and 25 pounds of honey plus seasonal fruits throughout the year. So that's what they produce on the one-tenth of an acre. Obviously, if you wanted to be vegan, you could easily, you know, do the same thing. Um, either just keep the animals as pets and, um, you know, take them from rescues or sanctuary, uh, you know, provide them um, a nice life and you don't have to exploit them for that. Just don't get new ones. So anyway, um, it's neither here nor there. You can be mostly vegan, you can be partially vegan, uh, and you would still have way less environmental, um, you know, footprint than eating these uh, meat-heavy diets. So um, it just goes to show you kind of like that, that that doesn't really hold up. It doesn't make sense. I also, again, not as a mono meal, I'm just giving it as a, as a point of reference. If you look at this article, I've covered this before in my um, video on Dr. Avi and organic. This is an article talking about veganic farming, and there is an example farm that is in uh, Greece, and they are doing all sorts of really awesome stuff with uh, hummus that's created from the uh, trimmings of olive trees, and they are breaking that down and creating a super rich um, hummus that can be used for uh, veganic uh, growing. And in their um, uh, study, when they were looking at this, they were able to produce, I think it was, yeah, double the uh, tomatoes versus um, conventional. They were able to produce almost eight times the number of sweet potatoes versus conventional. So that was, I talked about this in the uh, organic video, so check that out if you haven't seen it. But um, the, the main point I want to say here is that the sweet potato yield was 24.3 tons per hectare. So that's per 10,000 square meters. And uh, let me see my notes here on the side. That means that a, um, there was 9.83 metric tons per acre. Um, and then that would equal 884,970. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not... That's 884,970,000 calories per acre. <laughs> so it's like, I read that wrong, sorry, there's like a bunch of zeros there at the end. So 884,970,000 calories per acre. That's what they're able to make. That's just as a, you know, comparison for what you're getting from the animal-based, uh, you know, calories. And uh, I really want to talk about the other kind of claims that uh, Monbiot is making here about the ethics of this. Because he's also kind of um, playing this like sympathy card of like you kind of have to shoot the deer because otherwise they're going to starve to death, and uh, I'm going to show you how that's absolutely false. That's not what's ha what's really happening. Um, but just as a quick uh, kind of backstory, talking about why there are so many deer. The first thing is obvious to everyone and obvious to Monbio in his article too. He talks about it is because people have exterminated uh, the natural predators. So there are no wolves. There are no bears. Uh, that can go and hunt these animals and, and keep their numbers in check. Um, obviously, if you really did just leave them alone, um, at some point, you know, there would be um, a natural limit uh, because there's only so much food available to them. So um, the, the pro-hunting advocates will always say, well, then they'll die a slow, painful death of starvation if you don't um, actually kill them because there's more of them than the land will support. But that is not the, the case, and um, there are wonderful videos that uh, Emily from Bite Size Vegan uh, put together many years ago here. I refer to her channel all the time. Please do um, look through her videos. They're amazing. Uh, they have stood uh, the test of time really well. And um, the uh, first one that addresses some of these concerns is uh, called Is Hunting Better Than Factory Farming? Recommend it. Go check it out. It talks a little bit about this idea. Um, and uh, compares, you know, whether or not it's more ethical. And yes, in some ways, of course it is because, you know, the animals are getting to express their natural kind of um, desires and, and life and, and live in a way that, uh, that they're intended to versus being stuck in a factory farm uh, cage or, you know, some kind of shed is certainly very unnatural and very bad. Um, is it better even from an ethical standpoint from uh, uh, like 
you know, humans, um, probably it's still more natural. And is it better health-wise? Probably because they're not pumped full of antibiotics and probably not as much of a uh, danger to um, people. Although there are um, uh, zoonic uh, diseases that you can get um, from animals passed to humans. Um, I have, uh, I've got a video kind of coming up at some point in the future where I'm going to talk about uh, diseases coming from animals and there are ones that come from wild animals even in hunting. So it's not exactly, you know, um, like a fail safe thing, but in general I would imagine that there probably is less of a chance of you getting sick from eating animal products that you've hunted versus factory farmed ones. But uh, in either case, it's certainly not as, as easy a uh, claim to make as uh, some of these pro-hunting people will, will have you believe. So check out Emily's video. I definitely encourage that. And then I want to talk about this one in particular. This one is talking about whether or not uh, deer hunting is necessary for controlling the population of the deer. And there are some really interesting things here in her um, uh, blog post. Uh, always in her videos, she always has a, a blog post where she cites all of her references and stuff. So I definitely recommend checking that out. And in the one for this video, um, you can actually see kind of where she's uh, cited all the claims that she's made. But one of the interesting things is that, you know, why do we see so much, um, you know, advocacy for hunting animals? The, the, the real issue here is that wildlife management groups make a ton of money from selling licenses. Uh, she has an example here just from, I think it was, uh, where was it, Wisconsin or Minnesota someplace, I don't remember. Oh, Minnesota. Yeah. So this is from Minnesota. And you can see that uh, for their fiscal year 2010 to 2011, uh, hunting licenses made up, you know, 59.4%. So just under, you know, just under two thirds of their money of their revenue comes from selling hunting licenses. And this is probably pretty uh, similar in other areas of the US and probably pretty similar for, you know, many other countries where hunting licenses are not cheap and uh, they do make up a bulk of the revenue of these these groups. Um, in her video, she also talks about how these wildlife uh, management and, you know, Department of Natural Resources uh, people specifically create uh, environments that are conducive to large numbers of deer. So here, uh, the, uh, she's got a quote from Ned Cavaney, a Department of Natural Resource uh, state forester in Michigan, stated in the Northwoods uh, Call newspaper, we manipulate forest habitat to produce amazingly unnatural deer, deer numbers, up to 2 million of the critters some years. That probably approaches 2 million more than existed before man got in on the act. So <laughs> it's like, um, it's pretty crazy. Like people, you know, go out and they make habitat that is conducive to breeding lots of deer. And if that weren't enough, as I showed in the other article, they then go and plant uh, food plots that also um, help to, uh, you know, shore up the numbers of the deer. And then there's all of this like, oh, well, we got to kill them because there's so many of them. They would starve to death if we didn't intervene. It's like, no, there would never be as many if you didn't intervene to begin with. And, and then, of course, the natural predators as well. But it's not just the natural predators, the missing natural predators, that's the problem. It's the fact that they are actively working on having lots of deer to shoot because they make lots of money from this. Um, so that's, you know, that's one thing. And then the other thing that was really interesting that I had did not know about um, before seeing this video is that uh, the um, uh, hunting tends to skew the natural... Um, uh, ratio of males to females in the uh, deer populations. So what you can see here is that uh, conventional deer culling is all about killing mature male deer or bucks with large antlers. So again, some people, yes, do, do kill the does because they're doing it for meat, but a lot of people are hunting for the trophy. They're, they want the antlers, they want the, um, you know, the, the pelts or whatever, they, they're going for the large males. And um, that leaves the female deers or does alone. A single buck can breed with multiple does, and so what that means is that hunting reduces the number of male deer. It does not reduce the number of offspring. The sex bias hunting skews the natural one-to-one -one ratio of male and female deer to as high as one to eight, meaning one male for every eight females. So what that means is that if you just left them to their own devices, they would have roughly equal males to females. But when you kill more of these males than you do the females, you end up with the males still being able to mate with all of the available females and you end up with way more offspring because if there were less females and they were just even, you would have, uh, you know, fewer overall deer because there would be fewer of them capable of breeding. So they, they give an example here. If you have 500 deer, 
and each doe produces an average of 1.4 fawns, as 67% of mature uh, um, does have twins, then in a natural one-to-one -one ratio, this would yield 350 new fawns. Uh, this is in a year. So, but if you take that same 500 deer, and instead of having one-to-one -one males to females, you have a one-to-eight, so you have eight times as many does as you have um, bucks, then you now have 622 new fawns. So it's, you know, almost 300 more than what you had if you just left them alone. So hunting absolutely makes things worse. It does not help. People are artificially changing the environment to try to make it um, more conducive to uh, deer hunting in general. And then they're also hunting them uh, in a way that skews their, um, you know, sex ratio and messes that up as well. So there's a whole bunch of issues. Now, are these issues happening in the highlands of Scotland where, you know, Mambio is talking about restoring the forest? Uh, yes and no, probably, because they're not intentionally making the, um, you know, the habitat for the deer uh, per se by cutting out the forest because it's already been done. So there's already so little forest there that that, that doesn't need to be done like in the U.S. in the examples I showed you. Um, in fact, they do have too little. And this is the article that I want to kind of end the video here with. This is from 2012, and it's written by Mambio, and he's talking and ridiculing about a, uh, um, like a paper or a, a, a publication by the Scottish Gamekeepers Association, which was arguing in favor of, um, you know, killing deer on these, like, large estates and how it's kind of, like, important and necessary and it should be maintained as a tradition and what have you. And um, he talks about how this is just a bunch of rich people that own, like, way... Uh, more land than they should and they basically just use it to maintain their uh, crazy you know blood sport uh, even to the tune of like losing money on these kinds of things because they're they're paying money to feed the deer to keep them alive in really high unnatural numbers and uh, interestingly enough there's a figure in here where they talk about how many deer there were um, yeah here it is since 1965, red deer in the highlands have risen from 150,000 to 350,000. Now, if you remember from the first article I showed you, they had, he's saying that there's now 750,000 deer in the highlands of Scotland. So uh, from 2012 to 2020, in eight years, this has gone up from 350 to 750. It's more than doubled. Um, just an interesting um, you know, note. And, uh, you know, he talks a lot about how a lot of this land is owned by just a very small number of people. It's, uh, I think he goes through and says, what is it? They did an, anal an analysis, a wide territory in the far north of Scotland covering 5,200 square miles. And when they uh, looked at the report of this land, over 4,000 square kilometers. Did I say miles in the other one? I may have said that, sorry. Um, they're both uh, kilometers are in the hands of estates which number just 81. So in other words, three quarters of one of the largest count, uh, counties in Britain is owned by 81 families. They aren't the 1%, they're the 0.000001%. Um, they basically talk about how um, they make the claim, this, this Gamekeepers Association, that, oh, you know, they're, uh, you know, these these things are providing much needed local uh, revenue and all this kind of stuff like the people who work on these estates you know this is uh, their only source of income and what have you and you know they're basically saying that yeah like in uh, across the tenant sampled covering 780 square kilometers it found 112 people in full-time equivalent employment uh, so what they're basically doing is they have you know one person for every seven square kilometers and then they said, is there anywhere in Europe below the Arctic Circle with a lower level of employment? It's, it's a really, really stupid case. And um, it's just funny that, uh, you know, somebody would try to use this to justify why they should, uh, you know, still be allowed to use these lands for hunting these, um, um, you know, these poor animals. And basically what they, this was the most damning part in this article for me. It finds that the income generated by stocking on the estates throughout Sutherland is 1.6 million pounds. A tiny sum when spread across 4,000 square kilometers, that's fine, but their expenditure on deer management is 4.7 million pounds. So that means they are spending over 3 million pounds more uh, on keeping these deer alive than what they are actually, um, you know, uh, getting as, as far as like, uh, um, you know, income, like, like generation. 
So uh, he, he says right here, Mambiel says, stocking can be sustained here only because the bankers or oil sheiks or mining magnates who own the land are burning money on their expensive pastime, or as the report puts it, providing substantial financial support to remote rural economies. In other words, even the tiny numbers of people employed by deer stocking are entirely reliant on the irrational spending of absentee landlords who could be terminated at, which could be terminated at any time. So basically, uh, you know, Monbiot's got it right here. These, these, uh, these large estates are maintained by super wealthy, rich people. They make less money than they spend to uh, maintain these lands and maintain the animals on these lands. And the reason why they do it is because they take a sick, perverted uh, joy out of killing these wonderful, beautiful animals. And they're willing to spend three million pounds more uh, per year to keep them all alive because they, I'm sure they, they feed them. They talk about that in this article, too. I can't remember exactly somewhere in the beginning how they're, they're bringing in um, food to, uh, uh, to, to keep these deer alive. And that's why it's also costing them more money than they actually earn from the people who go and hunt there. They're using these lands to go with their friends and invite people that they know to go and kill these animals. So, you know, you have these, these rich people that are um, perfectly happy to uh, lose money on uh, keeping these poor deer alive, uh, feeding them through probably, you know, grains or corn or who knows what other kinds of food they're, they're bringing in to uh, actually keep these uh, deer uh, numbers high enough that they can just go and shoot them, um, you know, with their, their, their similarly wealthy, you know, rich uh, friends and uh, business associates and what have you. And Mambio was um, correctly calling this stuff out eight years ago. And then now he's going there and trying to make a case for, uh, you know, killing these, these animals because he needs to protect the little saplings. There are so many other ways that they could be protecting the saplings. He tries to make this case that like, oh, well, fun fencing doesn't work because it keeps all the mammals out and whatever. It's like, that's, that's a load of crap. I mean, you could, you could make the fencing with little access areas for smaller animals to get underneath or, you know, um, you know, through in some narrow openings, you know, that would be too big for the deer to get through. Um, there's definitely natural barricades you can do. There's, uh, various bushes like, um, uh, you know, that, uh, that could be used to keep, um, larger animals out because they are very prickly, but smaller animals can go through them. Um, so there's just, there's a number of different ways that you could do it. And the fact is that there would never be that many deer to begin with if these large estates weren't actually actively trying to, um, cultivate their numbers and, um, you know, and grow them so that they could have more animals to shoot and that is the value of the land. He even talks about it in the article that uh, a lot of these um, lands are valued by the number of stags that are on the land. So it's there's a very clear like financial incentive for people uh, to keep these numbers high. And also, it's not a financial incentive, I guess, but but more just a kind of like bragging rights and, and what have you. And then to be able to go and kill them <laughs> for blood sport. And that's what this really comes down to. The people that I was shocked with uh, were the people who claimed to be vegan and were supporting Monbio in his in his post, um, you know, in his in his uh, op-ed, and there were a lot of people on Twitter who were uh, really upset. Obviously, I was one of them. But then you had um, people who were supposedly you know vegans and they were uh, supporting the stance and trying to say that like yeah, there's probably you know lower environmental impact by shooting this deer than there is by you know farming uh, plants for a vegan diet. Uh, I hope that I've adequately shown you guys that that's not the case. Um, it's also not sustainable. It's also not ethical. You know, there's, you know, you, you can't do the wrong thing to try to do the right thing. That's not how things work. Like, uh, killing this deer is not doing the right thing. The reason why that deer is there is because of human intervention. And it's there because somebody doesn't want wolves there to, that will potentially eat sheep or other kind of farmed animals that people aren't willing to lose. Um, the uh, deer are also there in such high numbers because they're um, creating uh, artificial feed for them that wouldn't be there naturally. Uh, what about the reintroduction of, of predators? In a place like uh, the UK... Um, being an island where the natural predators have already been destroyed completely, um, there is no like predators that would come back if you just allowed it to happen, like in North America or other places in Europe. 
um, because it's an island, you would have to actually literally reintroduce them, um, you know, and that would involve human intervention as well. Now, I would argue that that's still better than, you know, shooting these animals and what have you. Um, but uh, I know that there's a lot of pressure from farmers uh, where they don't want these uh, natural predators reinstated. But my point is that you don't have to kill these animals uh, to keep their numbers in check. You actually just have to stop the human intervention that produces these uh, numbers to be so high in the first place. And, um, you know, Monbio claiming to be a vegan, but then shooting and killing this uh, animal and then also partaking and eating its flesh is very clearly not vegan. I absolutely, um, you know, do not condone this behavior. I condemn it, in fact. And I think it is hypocritical, and I think his article is pretty crap uh, where he tries to justify this. And I think it's pretty weird that, you know, eight years ago, he seemingly saw through this kind of uh, BS put out by the gamekeepers associations, and now he sort of seems to be, um, you know, have forgotten that and, and taking their side and saying how this is, you know, necessary to uh, regrow this habitat. You could regrow the habitat in other ways. You could do temporary fencing. You could do electric fencing. I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things that you could potentially do uh, to keep these animals out. And, um, you know, like I say, there's natural barriers that you can also plant and put up. There's a, there's a whole host of other things that you could do, and that's what should be looked at. And I'm going to end by just saying that I believe that the reason why people love this kind of uh, story where, like, you know, I'm killing the deer to save the deer kind of like nonsense uh, stuff is because it allows the status quo to go on longer. Uh, instead of pushing for um, the reintroduction of natural predators and leaving wild animals alone, um, instead of doing that, um, we are basically, you know, trying to muck about and play God or whatever you want to call it and, uh, you know, maintain their numbers um, by killing them. And then obviously there is a, you know, financial incentive for this kind of thing to, to be allowed to keep going on. And um, I, I hope that uh, by seeing this video, you know, you've, you've seen that uh, it's not quite as simple as, you know, Mumbio or other people would, would try to make it out. There is a huge human element to it. And I think that the people who are supporting this, you know, there is this kind of like, internal dilemma where they are trying to use this to justify their own actions and their own um, kind of, you know, uh, I guess like uh, ethical, um, you know, confusion that they're feeling by uh, looking for things that can be pointed against veganism to say, look, it's not even as ethical, it's not even as environmentally sustainable, blah, blah, blah. You could just kill this deer because there's too many of them anyway and improve the environment and, and all this kind of stuff. It, it's it's good news about people's bad habits. That's what it comes down to. People want to hear this kind of stuff because they want to feel better about saying, haha, vegans don't have the moral upper uh, ground, you know, the, the, you know, the, the higher ground. And, um, you know, I feel good about eating my, my burger and my whatever and my eggs and my pork and everything else that people think belongs to them and isn't from an exploited animal because, haha, vegans kill animals too. And I just think it's it's really sad, and I think he's played right into this uh, narrative, and um, I'm very disappointed. I don't really know his work uh, too much, but when I did see these things, I, I really did want to make a video about it and explain to you guys my thoughts on it. So um, rest assured, I will not be uh, going and hunting deer and killing deer and eating deer. Um, I don't think it's ethical. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's environmentally friendly. I don't think it's realistic uh, for, you know, everyday normal people. I think if you're super uber ridiculously wealthy and you have like hundreds and maybe thousands of acres of, of land and you could, you know, afford to just keep wild animals there and shoot them and kill them, like, okay, doesn't make it ethical. Um, is it sustainable? Yeah, probably. But like if everybody needed thousands of acres, you know, just to be able to maintain a small family, like, you know, where would, where, like how many planet Earth would we need for that? Like we already use more resources than can be, you know, um, sustainably managed on this one. So this would just make, make things worse for sure. And, um, it's really just serving to keep people deluded and keep people buying into animal products. And that's my take on it. And if you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up and, uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not signed up and I'll see you in another video soon. Thanks. Bye. And the last point, the last point that I want to make 
is that uh, I won't be setting up a GoFundMe to help me buy 456 acres of land to raise and kill deer on. But if you do want to support me, you can support me on Patreon. Thank you to my supporters there. Or you can buy this wonderful t-shirt, Satan, the other wheat meat. And I have links for those uh, in my description uh, in the video below. So thanks. See you guys. Bye.